um, mistakes are very much part of the game. And, um, uh, you know, like for example, one of my uh, uh, mistakes which went to zero, uh, we, I've had a few zeros. Um, uh, so one of the zeros was a company named Horsehead Holdings. Uh, it's coming in uh, in Pittsburgh, uh, which uh, which was a uh, zinc processor, and um, and uh, they went bankrupt, went to zero, etc. It was a um, a significant loss because we had quite a gain for a while, and then it went the other way. And um, I wrote about Horsehead um, probably more than I should have in my letters to investors and in the annual meetings I had, I, I spent a lot of time explaining to my investors uh, about Horsehead. And I think in one particular letter, uh, I went on and on about you know the mistake and so on. And there's been only one time in my life uh, when Charlie Munger has called me. Uh, you know, and uh, I remember I was, uh, I was at Kennedy Airport and I was at the JetBlue terminal and I was about to take a flight back to LA and the phone rings and Charlie's assistant is on the line saying, Mr. Munger would like to talk to you. Okay, so I said, oh shit, what did I do wrong? You know, <laughs> so I, 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 uh, I think they were, they were boarding, but I said, okay, well, let, let's find a quiet place to, uh, <laughs> Talk to Charlie. So I, 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 uh, I, I told him. I told her, yeah, you know, uh, that's great. So anyway, he came on the line, and uh, he said to me that uh, he read my letter, and he said, you know, Monish, you want to learn from your mistakes, but you don't want to learn too much and you have to move on and you have to move on quickly and uh, his his concern it was really i think i was i was very touched because his concern was you know whether my mind was being messed with you know um and actually uh, you know if you um, if you i think recently there was a uh, a letter written by, I think it's Wedgwood Partners, uh, where these guys had been very long-term holders of Berkshire Hathaway. And they wrote a letter in which they gave a long list of reasons of why they've unloaded their Berkshire position. Uh, how many of you have seen that letter? Okay, so anyway, you can, you can just go to God Google and say Wedgwood Partners, Berkshire Hathaway and God Google will pop up that letter for you and uh, it'll, it'll, um, it'll show you all the different things that they, they said in that letter that Warren has done wrong. So they were saying, look, we've had this massive bull market in the last 10 years and you bought IBM and that didn't work well and uh, you bought Precision Cast Parts and that didn't work well and you bought Lubrizol and that didn't work well uh, and then you bought Apple, but you didn't buy enough. And then you should have bought Microsoft and for whatever reason, I mean, Microsoft, he, Warren has said he can't buy it because of his friendship with, with Bill Gates. But you know you know Bill so well and you know Microsoft so well and that's done so well, it's not in the portfolio. Um, and you guys knew that Google was great because the founders came to you on and on. The guy listed a whole bunch of mistakes of Warren Buffett, right? And uh, and actually, if you look at the if you look at the Berkshire, and I pointed this out in the Columbia uh, interview, that if every Berkshire acquisition were equal weighted, um, they have a very large number of mistakes. Uh, I mean, all their almost all their retail investments, other than Borshams and Nebraska Furniture Mart, didn't work, and there are dozens of them. Um, so the thing is that. If you equal weight them, the record isn't great, but the reality is they're not equal weighted. Uh, and he's been right on the big ones. Um, and so uh, when, you, when you dollar weight it, the record is great. 
And so we are human and Warren Buffett is not, okay? And God makes a lot of mistakes. And God's first apostle, also known as Charlie, uh, you know, called from the heavens and said, it's okay. It's okay, don't, don't beat yourself up too much because mistakes are par for the course. Even God makes them. And uh, so the thing is, you know, that's why Templeton said that you can be, you can have a phenomenal record even being wrong one out of three times. And uh, so in the investing business, uh, mistakes are par for the course. Uh, there are gonna be plenty of mistakes. Uh, and I think I really got a lot out of the Munger phone call because basically, you know, we have, because we are humans and we like to analyze and we like to get better, you can get into a tailspin where you're trying to learn too much from the mistakes. And they, there are scenarios under which we can lose money on graph tech. There are some scenarios under which graph tech can go to zero. There are many things that can happen which can destroy the thesis. Um, that doesn't mean it's a bad investment. So there are businesses where you could make 10 times your money and it would not have been a prudent investment. And there are businesses that you would have lost a lot of, a lot of money and it was absolutely correct to make the investment. So it's a game of probabilities and I think as long as we have you know, done our homework and tried to assess the probabilities correctly, um, you cannot always tell the score by what's on the board. Uh, you have to go deeper than that to, to tell the score. And um, so I think mistakes are, mistakes are inevitable in investing, they're gonna happen. Uh, I mean, even if you look at the, the book, like, you know, Good to Great, uh, all those companies went AWOL. You know, they were all touted as great businesses and they all faltered, or most of them faltered. Um, and that's the nature of capitalism. I mean, that's one of the reasons that keeps me away from the compounders is because almost no businesses survive for 30 years, you know, if you extend that to 50 years, it becomes an even smaller number. And how many businesses have been great compounders for 100 years? Well, you know, GE is I think the only one that's been around for that long and look where they're at, you know. And uh, so, so when you're trying to go through these kind of long runways, the history of long runways isn't that great, you know. I mean, we don't have, I can't point to 10 businesses which have done really well for 100 years on the planet. I, I, I couldn't come up with a list like that. Uh, and so that tells you that there are very strong forces in capitalism with creative destruction which uh, take the mighty down. And, uh, and such. So that's one of the things that kind of goes on in my head about, you know, what can go wrong is, uh, and probably I'm overdosed on the mighty going down and probably need to temper that back a little bit. Uh, but, that, but that's where that is. And um, mistakes are our friend. We want to learn, but don't learn too much. Next question. Monish, how do you make, you know, that was just a, a very interesting response. How, how do you balance uh, learning but not learning too much? How, how, do you, how, how do you find the right balance there from your mistakes? So I think, you know, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about what Charlie said because my phone call with Charlie, you know, the, the phone call with God are only two or three minutes long. You know, right. <laughs> God's, got, God's got a few things going on. And, um, and, but, you know, I spent a lot of time thinking about those two or three minutes. And uh, I mean, I think the most important thing is it can't mess with your brain. It can, you, can't, you can't get it into your head, you know, where it takes control. 
So what I'm saying is that um, mistakes are going to happen. We want to learn from them. We want to keep getting better. But you have to keep playing the game. And you have to keep moving on. So if it's stopping you from moving on, uh, I mean, you know, one, uh, I, can, I can tell you very directly, for example, that, you know, since Guy is not in the room, we can beat up on him some, you know, especially since he hasn't paid yet. Um, but, you know, Guy went long horse head. Uh, and and it, it actually, uh, I think it messed with his head uh, because he was then very deeply involved in the bankruptcy proceedings and on the creditors committees and all of that. And I kept trying to tell him through that entire process that uh, it's not worth it, move on. There's none of these things that just, because an enormous amount of time and, and actually there were no recovery. So actually there was, there was a total waste of time to do all of that. Uh, but one thing he would point to very directly is while all that was going on, while he was completely focused on Horsehead after it had gone to zero and in bankruptcy, is I brought up Mao Tai to him. And I tried to get through, but the brain was, com his brain was completely on Horsehead. And so I kept telling him, guy, Mao Tai. And he's saying, Mao what? You know? And I said, Mao Tai. And he couldn't, he could, I couldn't get past, right? And I think he made, I don't know, maybe a $100,000 investment in Mao Tai or something. It's a very, very tiny investment, you know, irrelevant, basically. Couldn't make any dent to the portfolio. And in 2017, uh, Guy, me, and my daughter went to Mao Tai headquarters. We, we made a field trip, okay? By that time, it was already at about 600 RMB, so he thought it's all over. And then he had such deep regrets. And of course, I didn't want him to ever forget those regrets. So I spent the entire trip just telling him, Guy, do you remember all those phone calls and all those conversations where I tried to talk to you? I would try to shake you up and I said, you are a compounder guy. And I bring up all crappy businesses to you. Here I am bringing you a great compounder and the greatest of all compounders. And I couldn't get through. And uh, of course that, that uh, really irritated him because what he wants to do is, he now tells me I should have just bought 10% of my fund in Mao Tai and I should have just kept it till the day I die. You know, very simple. He, I know that if he had bought it, Unlike me, he wouldn't have sold it, right? Because his, he's got uh, superior genetics on that front. Um, but, but the thing is that uh, he has inferior genetics on seeing the diamond in the rough, right? So, uh, so anyway, uh, that's the way life is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that um, learn but don't learn too much. Uh, we let you fill in the blanks of how to how to figure that out